Welcome to TV News. I'm Carrick Stoller. And I'm Jenny Parker. Today we have a story on medical marijuana and the scoop on the student and teacher plans for spring break. We'll cover some recent changes at Staples and Radio Shack and take a look at wind energy in Iowa. And finally, a group of Marshalltown residents that went to the state capitol to influence the political process. All this coming up next. We are often asked, what exactly does the Marshalltown Area United Way do? We help people from all walks of life. We help families, babies, kids, teenagers, moms, dads, seniors, and those with terminal health issues. People who need hope. We improve people's lives. We invite you to be a part of it. MarshalltownUnitedWay.org A Marshalltown man who allegedly hit his daughter across the face has been arrested. According to the police, Donald J. Snyder, 47, was arguing with his adult daughter because he was upset about her child's toys on the floor. As the argument continued, Snyder assaulted her. The victim tried hitting Snyder back, but he pinned her on the couch. Snyder is now charged with a serious domestic assault. Medical marijuana, that's up next. Interesting. More from Parker Yoakums. Medical experts spoke with Iowa lawmakers on March 5th about the positive effects of medical marijuana. We asked students at Marshalltown Community College about their thoughts on legalizing medical marijuana. I am very much for it. I also believe recreational use of marijuana should be legalized. I believe it's no worse than tobacco or alcohol. So it should be legal if those things are legal. You know, I, I, we're probably going to go back to that medical versus whatever. Um, my thoughts have always been that if you do something that doesn't hurt other people, there's not a problem. I feel like medical marijuana is really just an unofficial way to legalize marijuana since it's quite easy to get a prescription and that's usually just what people do who want to legalize weed but need a first step on the path to get there. So I'm not totally for it because I don't want to see marijuana usage grow, especially among younger students, because I know that can really affect their future. But at the same time, I still do agree that people should be able to smoke it at a legal age. Pretty much it should be legal. I mean, if it has benefits, health benefits for people, they should be able to use it. I'm okay with it being legalized as long as it's truly used for medicine. Personally, I don't know about that. Um, I would like to find out, but I honestly don't know. I'm not no doctor, so I have not tried it. I would like to know if it, if it does work. If it does, then hey, that's awesome. If not, who knows, man. It's what you see is what you get, you know? Well, yes, yes I do, I do. And I think it's ridiculous that something that helps patients in, is not legal yet when when tobacco is. Like, that's something that hurts me a lot because it's killing so many people. Marijuana has never killed a single person unless, unless they were driving high or something and they got in a car crash. But then the same thing can be said for alcohol. Many more people die under the influence of alcohol than under the influence of marijuana. And so it's, it's not nearly as harmful as many other things that are legal. And this is helping a lot of people. It should be legal. Though legalizing medical marijuana is a hot topic, it's also a controversial one. Time will only tell if the trend of legalizing medical marijuana will continue. Coming up soon is the spring break. J.C. Roberts has been asking students and teachers about what they're up to. Spring break for MCC is next week. We got the chance to go around and ask some students and staff what their plans are. I'm going to be working for spring break most of the time, saving up to go to Mexico in April. Uh, I was supposed to go to Texas in San Antonio, but uh, my plane is canceled because of one of my friends, so I'm thinking about going to Atlanta in Georgia. Uh, this spring break, I plan on going to Comic-Con in the first weekend up in Kansas City and meeting a bunch of famous nerdy people, like different Star Trek cast members and comic book authors. And for the rest of the weekend, I'll probably just relax and enjoy not being in class. I might throw a party for some, for some of my friends, but nothing too big outside of Comic-Con. Um, sleep in. Let's see, going down to Kansas City for a few days. Uh, just to kind of get away. I really am looking forward to spring break and some warmth. I am sleeping in for a few days and then since I coach volleyball here, both Saturdays we're hosting spring tournaments so I'll be working 
Uh, my plans are, you know, go back home in Minnesota, just chill around the house, you know, probably go play some indoor soccer and stuff. Not really much to do, just take a break from school. Well, my plans for spring break were actually to go ice fishing, but with the warm weather, I'm not sure if the ice is going to be safe, but I'm still planning on doing some ice fishing, and then I'll probably go back to Dubuque, where uh, a lot of my family still lives, and go visit family as well. Along with having their own plans, thousands of college students travel to the beach or other warm places to spend their spring break. There are many concerts, beach parties, and nightclubs, making the options limitless, ensuring a fun spring break for all. As you can see, spring break is going to be a good time for everyone. Reporting from TV News, I'm JC Roberts. I'm definitely looking forward to the break myself. Thank you, JC. Staples and Radio Shack, two corporations that operate locally, announced they will be closing stores across the nation. By 2015, Staples said they will close 225 stores because of the increase in online shoppers, and Radio Shack said they will be closing 1,100 stores. The locations of the stores the companies are planning to close have not been released to the public. Marshalltown's local stores did not comment on whether or not they would be closing. However, the local Staples has posted signs saying clearance making room for thousands of new products. Staples and Radio Shack will release more information at a later time. An increasing number of windmills are popping up around the state and are now making Iowa a prime location for alternative energy. Andrew Hughes got the scoop on that story. Chicago may be the windy city, but Iowa is now officially the windy state, as Iowa has been rated number one in wind energy. A report released by the American Wind Energy Association indicated Iowa produces 27% of its total energy production from wind generation, which makes it the leader in the country. Marshall County is among the leaders in the state in wind generation as it has a total of 92 wind turbines, including a set in the Laurel area and the Vienna project in the Green Mountain and Gladbrook area. While Iowans use much of the wind energy produced here, it also boosts the economy to export that energy to other states. TV News had a chance to get the inside story on one of these gigantic wind turbines. Inside the larger, newer turbine, you get a sense of its size. This turbine stands 180 feet to the hub height. It's anchored by dozens of steel rods that plunge 25 feet into a concrete foundation. Now, what type of a wind could this withstand? Uh, it's rated to stand up to 130 mile an hour wind. Wind energy has been a great investment for Iowa, and there seems to be an endless supply of wind here in the heartland. I'm Andrew Hughes, reporting for McTV News. Kind of blows you away, doesn't it? Thank you, Andrew. A man was buried alive twice below the ruins of the Twin Towers and lived to tell the tale. Emily Barsky is standing ready with this amazing account. The events of 9-11 claimed the lives of many Americans, yet one man survived that day and told us his story. Joe Torrio, a retired firefighter, not only witnessed 9-11, but was amongst its devastation. As I was leaving my office, Somebody said a plane just hit the World Trade Center. And as I'm going over the bridge, I'm looking up, and this is what I see. I saw about 10 to 11 floors of fire all around the top of the North Tower. Torrio drove to the firehouse he formerly worked at to lend a hand. When he arrived, all the firefighters had already been dispatched. As he walked down the streets at the base of the towers, he heard a noise. I heard a roar, and I looked up, and the second jet came right over my head. The plane hit the building and just went like right through it as if the outside of the building was like a paper napkin. And I realized I probably had about 10 seconds left to live and I start running as fast as I can. The hotel fell on top of me. A piece of steel had hit me in the back of the head and the whole back of my head was split wide open. I had a fractured skull and huge slabs of concrete one by one were just hitting my body. With every other slab of concrete, more bones were breaking. Trio was discovered by rescuers and taken aboard a ship to be brought to New Jersey for medical attention. But tragedy struck again. And I heard them saying to each other that I was gonna die if I didn't get to a hospital. And then we heard a loud rumble and a roar and everybody on the boat started screaming, oh my God, here comes the other tower. And everybody on the boat with me just jumped overboard and left me behind. Trio was left stranded. He managed to take shelter in the engine room of the boat before the North Tower buried it. A second team of rescuers located Trio in the wreckage of the boat and brought him to a New Jersey hospital. The night of September 11th, when the sun went down, 344 New York City firefighters were declared dead. 
and eventually three days later one was found alive and that was me. Trio now travels the country sharing his inspirational story. I thought I had that obligation, you know, to show the strength that I didn't think that I really had. And ladies and gentlemen, you know, bravery is nothing more than the coward that we let escape from inside of us. Joe Torrio was a triumph among the tragedy of 9-11. For MCTV News, I'm Emily Barsky. Thank you, Emily. That's truly incredible. A group of 50 Marshalltown residents took part in the annual Des Moines Summit sponsored by the Marshalltown Area Chamber of Commerce. They were able to talk to several key legislators on issues important to the area. Main issues talked about during the visit included education reform, economic development, property tax reform, broadband internet, anti-bullying, and the gas tax. In addition to local businesses and education officials, a group of 22 students from the current Iowa Valley Leadership Group were part of the Marshalltown delegation. And of course, with the annual visit came the traditional lunch of Marshalltown's own Taylor's Made Right, which is a hit with legislators throughout the state. That's all we have for today. Signing off for TV News, I'm Carrick Stoller. And I'm Jenny Parker. Good day.